So in September of last year, we talked about the tragic story of Botham John, who was a 26 year old unarmed black man who was killed by police officer Amber Geiger in his own apartment. Now, Geiger argued that she mistakenly thought that she was in her own apartment and that Botham was an intruder, so she murdered him. And this is in spite of the fact that she was literally on the wrong floor. So something was off here. You know, it just, it didn't add up. It was evident that Geiger was clearly guilty. But the thing about this story is that even though this man was killed in his own apartment, nobody really expected there to be justice because unarmed black Americans are killed by police officers with impunity all the time. And they're let off. So nobody expected this case to be different, even though it's that much more absurd than other cases. He was in his apartment, but I mean, there's so little trust in the criminal justice system in America that we just figured, oh, she's going to get off. This is pretty much inevitable. Although this case is actually different because we just found out that a jury unanimously convicted Amber Geiger of murder. And I'll be honest, I didn't have faith that this would happen. I assumed that she'd be let off. At most, I thought, you know, maybe she'd be convicted of manslaughter. Definitely not murder, though. But um, it feels good to be proven wrong in this instance. Now, CNN is going to give us some additional details in a report from the courtroom. Uh, the jury having reached a verdict, uh, Ms. Geiger and your team, would you please stand? We, the jury, unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. No outburst. You could hear the gaps there inside the courtroom as the uh, the verdict was announced. Both them, John's family, the 26-year-old accountant who was uh, murdered by Amber Geiger uh, about a year ago, uh, were inside that courtroom. They've been wearing red every day of uh, coming to trial here. Uh, that was both them, John's favorite color. Amber Geiger's uh, family also inside that courtroom. Outside the courtroom, you can see the heavy security presence here at the courthouse. You have to go through a second layer of security get, to get to the courtroom that is at the end of the hallway uh, you could hear cheering outside that courtroom just shortly after that verdict was read here and this was a, a rather dramatic moment there were many people who didn't think that amber geiger would be convicted of murder in large part because one of the options that this jury had is that they could have convicted on a lesser charge of manslaughter this jury has been deliberating since about one o'clock central time yesterday we are now waiting for uh, both of john's uh, attorneys to come out to prosecutors to come out as well as um, uh, the uh, the defense attorneys. Uh, there has been a, a great deal of uh, legal issues that have come up in, in this uh, in this case. The, uh, the the family of, of, of Amber Geiger had, and uh, attorneys for Amber Geiger had been arguing uh, that uh, she had every right to defend herself because she had walked into the wrong apartment thinking someone was in her apartment. But clearly, this jury did not believe that and has now convicted her of murder. This is genuinely shocking. And I did not think that I would be saying that justice would be served here, but justice was served. Um, it's surprising. This doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden other black Americans and brown Americans who are killed by police officers with impunity will have justice. This isn't like the start of a new trend, but it's just one instance where... There actually was justice for a victim of police brutality, and that's really nice to see. Now, this is important. This is the first step to the healing process for both of John's family. But the thing about justice is even though it's important and it's really crucial in the healing process, a young man's life was taken. That life will never be brought back. He's gone forever. So even though justice is served and maybe his family and people in the community will have some comfort in knowing that, it still doesn't bring him back. It's still tragic. It's still really upsetting. A human life was lost. And even though there's justice, it doesn't make the situation, you know, any less sad. And um, Botham John's mom, Allison, was quoted before the trial basically saying this, quote, it's just 
very, very, very difficult living without Botham. There are so many things that I want to talk to him about. It's just been terrible. I don't even know how to explain it. Sometimes I don't even know how to feel. So this is someone who is clearly happy that, you know, there's justice. The murderer of her son was brought to justice, but he's not going to come back. You know, that's, um, that's it. That's a sad fact of reality. So even though, you know, um, there'll be justice in this situation, I still can't help but feel so devastated for Botham's mom and his family and Botham, right? Because it's awful to be unarmed and killed by the police in any circumstance. That's never okay. But when you're in your own home, where you should theoretically be the safest to be killed. I mean, if you are a black person in America, imagine the message that that sends to you. If you're a 14-year-old black boy thinking, I could literally be killed in my own apartment by a police officer. It's just sad. So all around, it's not going to bring him back. But the fact that justice was served, you know, it's a win that I will take, but it's still it's still tragic. You know, um, we need real, robust, comprehensive criminal justice reform, and we need to screen people before hiring them to police departments. Clearly, this individual was not capable of serving. She was on the wrong floor and mistook them for her apartment. I mean, it doesn't get any more ridiculous than that. So we need better screening. We need sensitivity training. And it can't just be, you know, a one and done deal. We need continuous training, weekly training, possibly, if that's what it takes to make these police officers more sensitive to the communities, to teach them to interact with people of color and to socialize them with people of color. So they're not only in these social circles of just white people and they view anyone who's not white as the other. You know, um, we just, we need to change the system so things like this don't happen. And um, I'll leave that there because I don't know what else to say about this. I'm, 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 I'm relieved for Botham's family and his mom. I just wish that this never happened to begin with.